This electrical cabinet got a lot more crowded since the last time I showed it to you guys. We have now take it upon ourselves to switch our battery bank system over to 24 volts from 12 volts. So I really wish I would have done it a long time ago when I first built this system, but you know, you live and you learn. Let's go over what we've done. We had to get a new inverter charger um, that runs 24 volt. We also added in some bus bars for our positive and negative 24 volt setup and it is way cleaner than the old setup, man. I'm, I'm really glad I did that. The, these bus bars are amazing. We've got our solar charge controller. I moved it from the interior cabin to in here because it just makes more sense. Since we went to a 24 volt system, we still have a whole bunch of stuff in our camper, like the fans, the lights, the refrigerator, uh, the water pump. Um, it all runs off 12 volts still, so. We needed a way to turn our 24 volts back into 12 volts. We got this guy right here. This is the Orion 24 volt to 12 volt converter. And it's got this neat little screw port right over here. You can actually adjust your output voltage, which is really important. Um, from talking to some friends of mine, that have DC to DC converters. A lot of them, the DC to DC converter converts to 12 volts. Even though technically, yes, our system is made to run on 12 volts, it's actually more like 13.5. So if you're running 12 volts, all of your 12 volt components are gonna be acting like the batteries are about to die. You don't want that. The water pump's gonna run slow, the lights are gonna be dim, you know, the fans are gonna run slow. It's no bueno. This thing, I can adjust the voltage to, I've got it set currently at 13.33. I might play with that later, see how we do. Uh, right now, everything's running fantastically, so I'll probably just leave it alone. I've yet to set this up, but this is one that I've been wanting for a very long time. This is the Servo GX, and basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna take all the sensors, all the electrical information that we have here, and upload it to the cloud via our Starlink satellite. And that way I can be anywhere in the world, pull it up on my phone if I have cell coverage, and I'll be able to monitor how our electrical system's doing, how much solar we're getting. If we leave the um, air conditioner running on the batteries, I can monitor how much power it's drawing and whether it's actually kicking on because I can kind of see the voltage uh, or the amper draw between the um, when the compressor's on and when it's not. And I can see how much battery we got left and you know if the solar's keeping up with it and all that stuff. And so very excited about that. So the nice thing about Battleborn batteries is we were able to buy all of our Victron equipment through their website and they actually go into the settings and they set it up specifically tailored to your system, which is really nice. And by the way, we are an affiliate of Battleborn Batteries. I'm excited to announce as of now. So uh, if you find, look in the description, there's a link. Um, and if you follow that link and you purchase Battleborn Battery, anything, uh, the, the Victron, the batteries, uh, hardware, whatever, we get 6%. So you'll be supporting our channel and really helping us out. And if you want to know the intricate details of how this system was put together, we're going to show you exactly how I did this. It must be Maintenance Monday. Woo! Let's get to work. There's an amp calculator website and you can basically calculate what wire size you need for a particular amp draw and so I went to that website and checked it out um, there's a link in the description if you'd like to go and check it out for yourself and so I just plugged in my voltages and my amp draw my wattage all that stuff and it told me I needed one aught cable for 24 volt but if I wanted to go 12 volt I needed four aught cable four aught cable is massive and it's hard to source it's very expensive. When I originally built this electrical system, I built it on a 12 volt system and I didn't know as much as I'm learning now. Turns out I probably should have done a 24 volt system. Basically the reason that's gonna work better is because on a 12 volt system, technically I should be running four aught cables from those batteries. And that is a massive cable and it just won't fit. You know, it, this camper is uh, kind of small and 
that's that's a lot of big wires to be running through here so i i did the math on it and if i run a 24 volt system then the one aught cables that we've been using are more than sufficient and if your wire is not big enough to carry all that amperage um, it creates efficiency losses and efficiency losses create heat now going to a 24 volt system for the same amount of watts the same amount of power is going to be running through the wires but it's a lower amper because your voltage is higher the higher your voltage goes up the lower your ampers are for the same wattage and then the other thing i'm doing is my solar charge controller i had it mounted inside the camper uh, way up top on the far left hand side the furthest it could possibly be away from the inverter um, on this wall so the inverter energy was having to travel at 12 volts 60 amps quite a ways so now i'm moving this solar charge controller right here right next to the inverter we want the distance traveled to be traveled in the wire with the highest voltage and that creates the least amount of uh, loss in efficiency and least amount of heat so then once it converts over to 24 volts it'll only have to travel about 12 inches and so that's optimal we're also installing um, these uh, heavy duty terminal studs for both uh, our negative and positive wires and so that way we'll be able to have a clean spot that we can hook everything up and we're following the rules of electricity <laughs> which i don't think i followed completely before and then this is the servo gx um, by victron and um, its job is to be the brain of the operation so it's going to connect to the solar charge controller it's going to check connect to the multi plus and it's going to connect to the dc to dc converter that takes my 24 volts and turns it in back into 12 volts for all the 12 volt components inside our camper that need 20, 12 volts to run up. It's gonna connect to all that and it's gonna connect to our Starlink Wi-Fi and I will be able to monitor my entire electrical system and what it's doing, how the solar is charging, um, how much power is coming out of the inverter from anywhere in the world if I just connect to my account on Victron. I think that's really cool. It's something that uh, I've been wanting to add to our system for quite a while, and I'm really looking forward to playing with that. These are all 12 volt batteries, and we're gonna have to wire groups of two in series to create 24 volts. So our one aught cables that we were running before are the perfect size for a 24 volt system. I can reuse the parallel wires that I had since they're going the same distance. So I've gotta create, let's see, one, two, three wires. No big deal, right? You know how to do this. So I got some one knot cable for this project. It's uh, finely stranded, whereas my original cables that I went with were lots thicker strands. And from what I understand, uh, electricity flows better through these and I did get copper. That's the best material to get. The more efficient we make the cables, the less loss there is the more efficient our system will be and the more power we'll be able to get out of our solar system and hopefully we'll never need to plug in again that's our goal let's dive into this project i've got my handy dandy wire crimper using a sledgehammer you just take these uh these little battery terminals or connectors rather put them in here with the wire in it of course and then you slam it with the hammer and it crimps it down great and that those crimps have been holding just fine. I know there's these really expensive hydraulic crimpers that you can buy that do an octagon shape and it's really cool. This does a triangular shape and it's good enough. And then we also have our cable cutters. These are important to have if you're doing a big project like this. And of course, a heat gun. The last time I did this, I was using a torch. And while that does work, it's kind of dangerous and quite frankly, it's, it's really easy to burn the uh, heat shrink material. And if you haven't seen heat shrink material, it looks like this. And you just slip it over the end of your cable with your crimper in there and then apply heat and it shrinks around it and protects the connection. It protects it from corrosion and it also protects it from, you know, arcing off of stuff that you don't want it to arc off of. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut the length and 
get these batteries in, man. Let's get some power. Going from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system, originally we had the batteries all facing the same direction. And what I've done is I've taken groups of two batteries and faced them in opposite directions. And then I'm taking the plus terminal and the negative terminal and I'm marrying them together and that creates 24 volts in that connection. You see I've done that three times here. And then the next thing to do is you want to take a negative wire and connect your negative terminals. Okay, just like this. And then you'll take your positive terminals and connect them like so. Then you'll have one giant battery bank of uh, 24 volts. Then you take your main power source uh, negative lead and you put it on one side of the battery bank and you take your positive and you put it on the other side of the battery bank and thereby you're creating uh, one giant battery out of all these. Here's the current challenge. I have this tiny little box. I want to put all this stuff right in that tiny little box and it's already pretty full. So I'm going to put the solar charge controller right here and then this little guy is going to go right in here and then these guys are going to go right like this underneath the solar charge controller and then there's one more piece of this puzzle so this is the dc to dc converter it takes the 12 volt or 24 volts and turns it back into 12 volts and i'm going to put it right underneath the inverter so this is going to be a jam-packed compartment <laughs> What I'm gonna do now is this is in the way and it's really not, it's, it's kind of been wiring away over the years. The only things that we really use this panel for are this side. So I'm gonna cut all this off and kind of open up this compartment more and then I'm gonna build an aluminum frame for it to keep it strong. And uh, I think that'll work just fine. And we got more room. That's what I wanted to say. All right, so what we're doing here is uh, running a new wire for the solar system. Um, and so the, the old solar system had a wire going to it um, that we were using that went up into the cabinet over the sink. And we had our MPP uh, charge controller in the cabinet over the sink. That converted it to 12 volts and ran it down to the batteries. Um, the problem with that is once you convert it over to 12 volts, you need a larger gauge wire for the amount of solar that we've put up. And I don't think that wire was big enough either. So the best thing to do is to put your MPPT uh, charge controller as close to your power uh, system as you can, as close to your batteries as you can. So that's what I'm doing right now. So uh, I got a new, cable for our, uh, solar that's the appropriate gauge there's 92 volts that's going to run through this uh this wire and it's only going to be like i think a little under seven amps so this wire is plenty big um so what i did is i took the cap off of the vent for our black tank up on the roof and i drilled a hole right next to the uh the vent tube and I sent this wire down through the roof alongside the channel that this uh, vent sits in, which is right through this corner here. And then that exited into this electrical box and that's what you're looking at here. So now the next thing I gotta do is get this wire down underneath the floor of the camper and there's a black tank in the way. So there's all of these wires 
um, run through a hole on this side of this electrical box. And so I'm trying to fish this wire through that hole and I'm doing it blind because I don't want to remove all of this electrical. That's a lot. <laughs> so uh, I pulled the screws out of this board here and I'm lifting up this board and I'm able to shove my, my hand in there. And the hole is way over here on this side. Yep, there it goes. Sweet. So this is our solar wire that we plumbed down through the floor. I've got it running along the side here with all the other electrical stuff. And then it turns the corner and goes into the box with all the components where the MPPT controller is going. I've got the system wired up um, and it's time to put our 24 volt batteries in. So I've attached a wire that's going to go towards the back so that I don't have to attach it once they're in there because this not very much space um, but the nice thing is because I turn the batteries around uh, I'm going positive terminal to negative terminal on groups of two and that's creating 24 volts out of the 12 volt battery system all I got to do once they're in there is connect the positives to the positives and the negatives to the negatives Press the Aha! Just like that. What we're doing now is we're hooking up all the negative terminals together. Now I'm connecting the positive terminals together. All right. And when I'm ready, I'll tighten everything up and then I'll connect. This lead goes to the fuse and then the off switch and then the bus bar and then the inverter. And this one goes to the uh, smart shunt, then the bus bar and then the inverter. And so I'll hook this up to the negative side of this, and I'll hook this up to the positive side of that. And then I'll have a working battery. And I had to make a special tool for this. It's so tight in there. You always want to do stuff like this when the grounds are not attached to the uh, vehicle's frame. Because then, like, if I were to touch this metal here and it was attached to the ground it would arc and that would not be good In retrospect i should have given myself more room put a bigger box in but i'm not building another box so that's it gotta deal with it Luckily, I don't have to get in here very often. Now we just have those last two, these last two terminals to hook up. And we'll have a working system. But first, we install the new inverter. Take out the old one. So that's what we're gonna do. Here we go. Yes! Hopefully these are the exact same size. Uh -huh. Sweet! There's this hook right here. And it goes up and sits on that hook. And there's two bolts that go in and secure it on the bottom. And that's it. And that has held up through tremendous abuse. We've been on some pretty wild roads. Uh, 
sure is to just hook up the wires. Yeah, get on there. Twenty-seven point six three, right there. We ran a new solar wire um, from the top down through the pooper vent, um, which is a very convenient way to do this. I highly recommend it to everybody. And then made our wire over here, and this is the highest voltage. It's like ninety-two volts, so. Your longest wire should be your highest voltage for efficiency. And then uh, we ran the 12 volt lead, or actually, no, this is 24 volt now, up and around. You gotta have a fuse. We got a 250 amp fuse there and back down to our bus bar. So this bus bar is 24 volt only. And we also have, uh, this one goes to the inverter charger. And then this one goes to another 250 amp fuse and then the battery bank oh and the off switch important to have an off switch right here and then this wire goes to our dc to dc converter it takes our 24 volts turns it into 12 volts for uh, all the fans um, lights water pump you name it if it runs on 12 volt this is what does it and it goes over here to the orion you know, Ryan was kind of tricky. Um, so this here is where you plug in your 24 volt and it's labeled. And then this is where you plug in your 12 volt lead, uh, your hot lead. That is, this is your 24 volt hot and this is your 12 volt hot. And this is your ground for both 12 volt and 24 volt. So how does that work? That was the one that really had me messed up for a while. Um, what you want to do if you're building this kind of system is you want to have a ground for 12 volts and you want to have a ground for 24 volts and they go to the same peg, but they don't share the bus bar, okay? I tried to have them share the bus bar and it didn't like it. Um, so what I did is I ran a separate wire for the 12 volt ground and that goes way through that hole. I'll show you in a minute. It's, uh, there's a bus peg around that corner for the 12 volt. And then for my 24 volt, I ran, you can see this cable goes right up to the negative bus bar and it's all good. So basically what you want is to be able to put your tester on this peg and be able to touch 
this positive wire and get 12 volt and this positive wire and get 24 volt. And if you've done that, then this system is working great. And then um, the thing that's great about this is right in here, there's a teeny tiny little screw hole and you can adjust your voltage um, to whatever you want it to be between uh, I think 11 volts and 15 volts. Um, so we've got it dialed in to 13.33 right now and that seems to be running everything great. Um, the nice thing is we bought all this equipment from Battleborn Batteries. And so they go into the software, they go into those little settings like that for you ahead of time before they send it to you. And they set all the settings specifically to your rigging, which is incredibly important. Oh, and then we've got, let's see, this here is a smart shunt. So this is our battery monitoring system, as if we didn't have enough things connected to this battery. Um, so basically you run your negative cable from your 24 volt battery bank over to this, and then you run a negative cable from there to here, and then there's two wires that connect to your batteries, and then there's a um, ethernet cable. And moving on to the other side. So this here is our solar charge controller wire that runs all the way from our solar panels up on the roof up to through that hole and into the solar charge controller. This here is my negative bus peg for the 12 volt system. And then right below it, there's a 40 amp breaker for the hot side of the 12 volt system. And that's pretty much it. Um, that, that lead goes to the, um, both of these go to the uh, Orion DC to DC converter. These batteries, I wired them up in 24 volts. So if you notice, they're turned around opposing each other in groups of two. So on the back, you can't really see it, um, but there's a cable that runs from the negative side of this battery to the positive side of this battery. It just kind of arcs over like this. And then that way I have three 24 volt batteries instead of six 12 volt batteries. So this is what's called a series parallel configuration. In the front, all I gotta do is connect my positives together and my negatives together and then got 24 volts baby up here we've got this is the um connection for the uh victron inverter charger so you connect that to the batteries and then it is able to monitor what's going on and it sends out a bluetooth signal so that you can adjust everything on your phone which is pretty neat and that's it if you're interested in purchasing a system like this, I highly recommend Battleborn Batteries. Their warranty is second to none. Um, and we are affiliates now. So use our affiliate link in the description. Please uh, join us on our Patreon. Simple as $3 a month, um, really goes a long ways. Well, that's the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed it because I sure enjoyed making it. Thanks for following along. Remember, in your toolbox drawer, you can look all you want. The one thing you won't find is self-confidence. You know why? It's because it comes from within. You gotta remember to tell yourself, when you start a project or you're having a hard time, just take a deep breath and remind yourself, I can do this. And then go do it. See you next time. Thanks, guys.